title, The Coming Apostasy. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the apostasy is a continuous departure from truth. This departure, which starts before the rapture, will continue until the appearing of the beast. 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. <clears throat> so what's being said here is that at the start of the apostasy, it's going to continue until he makes his appearance. It'll be a continuous departure from truth, deeper and deeper into <coughs> A pseudo reality or pseudo realities. Scripture teaches the Luciferians cannot function in truth. They must first destroy truth's influence in order to manifest their own. And this is true of every society that's existed. That's why civilizations don't endure, because they're based on <clears throat> deviation from truth. Dictatorships limit truth. They can't function in the light of truth. <clears throat> Turn to Isaiah, the 59th chapter, verses 13 to 15. transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, receiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away, backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. So we find that the Luciferians <coughs> engineer a society to reject truth. And as it rejects truth, the Luciferian influence can grow and can dominate. Yea, truth faileth. And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. <coughs> and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him, and there was no judgment. So what's being said? When the society reaches a certain stage, <coughs> the total society is enveloped in falsehood, lies, duplicity. And anybody that wants to live righteously, morally, becomes a target. They literally uh, take their life in their hands. This is what our society is heading into currently. I think about the influence of homosexuality. Uh, I remember the time when it was so abhorrent to the average person that just to even speak of it would bring a raised eyebrows. But now we're in a society that not only tolerates it, but expects it to ultimately become a part and parcel of <coughs> normal lifestyle. The rationale, the reason for this is that the mind has been conditioned to receive a false reality. The reality is that this is a, uh, an alternate lifestyle in which the participants have a right to engage. It's a lie that has been fostered repeatedly 
to the point of it receiving acceptance. It's basically showing us that the society has degenerated down to a lower level. <coughs> Daniel 8, verses 11 and 12. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And a host was given him against the daily sacrifice, a reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. So basically it's talking about wearing down <coughs> the society of uh, YHVH, corrupting it, and the truth reaching a stage where it's non-effective. It, uh, <clears throat> it's speaking here about the influence of wickedness, the influence of evil, literally <clears throat> uh, nullifying the influence of truth in this society. Scripture teaches <coughs> that Satan and the Luciferians replace truth with a lying belief system and program their followers to reject truth when they hear it. A society that accepts the lie is programmed to detect truth and reject it as soon as they come in contact with it. Turn to the Gospel of John, the 8th chapter. Verse 43 to 45. <clears throat> Why do you not understand my speech? even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. <clears throat> For he is a liar and the father of it. So what he's saying here <coughs> is that Satan speaks a reality that he conjures up and the lie is based on this false reality that he manifests is that absolutely no truth in him everything that he manifests is a lie the liar and the father of it and because I tell you the truth you believe me not so they're programmed to reject the truth. That's why the scribes and the Pharisees, <clears throat> no matter what he did, no matter how many miracles he performed, no matter how sincere his credentials were and how impeccable his life was, they would not believe him because they were programmed on an alien belief system that was programmed to reject the truth of the gospel. Same thing is true <clears throat> in our society. As we go along, we're going to find that Christians become more and more antithetical to society because society is going to progress in a way in which it embraces <clears throat> the iniquitous evils of the Luciferians. And Christians that embrace righteousness will stand out by them. Scripture teaches Christians 
that are not grounded in the truth will be drawn away by the lies of false authority figures. The only way that they're going to make it is if they receive truth and it ingrained. Has to have truth has to become part of them. It's not just enough to know the truth. One has to do the truth. First Timothy, fourth chapter, verses one to two. <coughs> Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now what's being said here is this is referring to Christians who are grounded in truth and are going to hear the lies, the lying realities of Luciferians they're going to embrace them for their own aggrandizement. They're still within them. They're grounded in truth. That's why it says, speaking lies and hypocrisy. They're going to parrot the doctrines that they hear in order to bring themselves into high positions of authority, draw away <coughs> followings <coughs> after them, but they'll know what they're speaking is a lie. But they will speak it anyway. It says, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, they will literally uh, murder, put to death the spirit within them in order to progress in this lying reality. What we find here, and this deals with Christian communities, which at that, that time are going to be communities. Some will be infiltrated by false doctrine, uh, false teaching. We see examples of that, General of the Revelation, third chapter. Revelation, the second chapter. Verse 6 and 7. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. This is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, he talks about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which is within the community of the Ephesians. The Ephesians have been commended for testing false prophets, false apostles, finding them liars, and rejecting them. Nevertheless, this doctrine still is prevalent. Why? Because there are certain leaders in the Ephesian community that are promulgating it. Now, Doctrine of the Nicolaitans <coughs> comes after the word Nicolaity, uh, which means conquering the laity. And it deals with people rising up claiming to be able to interpret Scripture <coughs> and drawing people after them. Now, in these days, the inference is this is not past, this is future. The inference is there's only going to be one book of the Bible. That's the book of Revelation. It will be the book in which the church communities all ascribe to. Uh, and basically, one will say, well, how do you know? Uh, turn over to Revelation, the 22nd chapter.
versus 18. 20. Right testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. So in the future, the churches will have the book of Revelation. I don't think they're going to have any of the other books because at the time of the rise of the Luciferians, they're going to stamp out the written word of God. <clears throat> I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part out of the book of life, out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testify these things saith, Surely I come quickly, amen, even so come Lord Jesus. So it's talking here about the book, the scroll being available for people to see the leaders and the leaders now to be a leader <coughs> one has to have his name in the book of life <coughs> one has to be an authority figure the leadership which I believe uh, are going to receive this from the angelic group <coughs> as it states in Revelation the first chapter Father gives it to the Son, the Son gives it to the angel, the angel gives it to the church. <clears throat> he speaks here about individuals are going to hear and teach false prophecies, false doctrines, doctrines that run contrary to this book, and they're also going to distort the writings of this book. It says if they take away or add to, God will take away their part out of the book of life or add to them the plague. So everything is referred to, the judgment that's referred to comes from the book. The transgression comes from the person who has access to the book, an authority individual. Anyway, <coughs> the difference is going to have the rise of individuals promulgating the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, the ability to interpret the book of Revelation. And in doing so, they're going to add to or take away. <coughs> the churches, the church communities, are going to ultimately be infiltrated by a Luciferian influence. Five of the seven churches do not receive commendations. Only two of the seven churches receive full commendations. That due to the Luciferian influences that are in within them. This will take place, I believe, as they progress toward the time of the rapture. There's going to be a corrupting influence because the rest of the world is under the influence of Lucifer. <clears throat> so naturally... The influence is going to seep into the communities and it's going to touch the leadership. <clears throat> They're going to have to deal with false realities, part of the apostasy. The apostasy is a progressive downward defection from truth. Now, Scripture teaches man's world will ultimately be defined by things that are worshipped and things that are called God. <clears throat> it won't be one specific center of the corrupting influence. That doesn't happen until the second half of the tribulation period. First half of the tribulation period, you're going to have the rise of dominating Luciferian intelligences that are going to promulgate false realities <coughs> to program the human race.
Turn to 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, verses 3 to 4. We deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except they come in falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted themselves. In other words, he stands against, and he exalts himself over all that is called God, or that is worshipped. So, what's being said is the source of the apostasy comes from these intelligences that are promulgating lying realities into the human race to garner <coughs> power centers for themselves. Now, when it talks about exhaust himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped he's referring to the desire of humanity to define the definers <clears throat> the source the intelligence is promulgating reality some will be called God by the individuals that they're influencing others will simply be worshipped in the belief that these are <coughs> so high and so divine that, it, that they merit worship. Both cases, it has to do with receiving the false reality. When the beast makes his appearance, he's going to put a stop to the apostasy. No longer a downward descent from truth. He's going to claim to be the truth, the ultimate truth, and everything has to revolve around him. He presents himself as the end-all, be-all of all. That's why the apostasy ceases at that point. It centers around him. He coalesces everything. He becomes the central focal point of all things on the earth. Now, in this context of the earth being dominated by intelligences that are called God and that are worshipped, but are sentinels, focal points, repositories of lies, turn to Isaiah, the 28th chapter, verses 14 to 15. What channel? Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah. 28 verses 14 to 15. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. So this is talking about the ruling clique of um, Levites, priests, in Jerusalem during the first half of the tribulation period. Where are we supposed to be at? Isaiah 28. 28. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, ye have made a covenant with death and with hell. These are the uh, two examples of the intelligences 
that are going to be fostering lying realities to the human race. Because you said we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we in agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through it shall not come unto us for we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. They have bought totally into this lie. They are resting in a belief that because they have become participants of this covenant with the two intelligences, death and hell, who roam the earth, wiping things out, they are under the belief that they'll be protected. The inference is that everything that takes place during the tribulation period on half, on half of the Luciferians is a lie. Lying reality. They don't just speak a lie. They speak a reality, a belief system in which people dwell. It becomes their end-all and be-all of all, a belief system that's built up within them <coughs> that to them is so real that there's no way it can be changed. <coughs> anyway, in this passage of scripture, he talks about establishing truth. Verse 17, Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and the, <coughs> the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. So he's talking about a time when truth is going to manifest, and when it manifests, it's going to destroy the reality that's based on the lie. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, you shall be trodden down by it. <coughs> So it's referring here to the time in which <coughs> the end of the tribulation period will take place. Truth will again manifest on the earth. And as truth manifests, it's going to demolish the lying realities that have been erected. Now, turn back to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and then read verses 9 to 12. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So here it's talking about how to engineer a reality. They make it real. It's not something that just remains in the mind and the belief system. They can manifest it into <coughs> physical reality. with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. The delusion is going to be real. It's going to manifest. And people will, will uh, flock to it in such a way that there's no way in which they can be persuaded that it's not real. Of course it comes as a judgment. <clears throat> that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So before the end of the tribulation period, there's going to be such a manifestation, a satanic deception that people are going to buy into it. And I believe that it has a lot to do with the 666 mark. People are going to be so persuaded of that. They're going to take it. Thinking one thing, but in actuality, something else. Turn over to Revelation 14th chapter.
verse 9 and 10. They declare Babylon to be fallen in verse 9. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment is in the forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night, to worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receives the mark of his name, <coughs> who receives the mark of his name. So the inference is <coughs> that the beast is going to engineer a false reality pertaining to the mark of the beast and the number of the mark to persuade people to take it in order to survive the judgments that are coming on because this is going to be this is going to be a time in which judgment is pouring out all over the place they can see the armies massing to come back to earth they're gathering armies to go fight them in Armageddon yet and still people are going to be persuaded if they take the mark they're going to be able to escape all this stuff they're going to be so deluded by the satanic lie that multitudes multitudes I'm going to do just that. And instead of the escape that they were promised, torment is engineered within the individual who takes them out. It talks about they burst out into flames, pain, agony, the whole shop. They're like human torches lighting up the earth when the armies of heaven return and, <coughs> and uh, make their way into Jerusalem. So the lie to ultimately will register as a reality starting now in this society. Everything we see is turning into a lie. The government operates off of secrecy, chicanery, and lies. Businesses operate off of duplicity and lies. <clears throat> the buying and selling is deal dealing with chicanery and maximizing profits, minimizing quality, education, <clears throat> is uh, basically <clears throat> engineered off of duplicity. People cheated tests so they can get a high score. Honesty diminished among family, friends, relatives. The fabric of society is coming apart under the Luciferian influence. Of course, it's what it's meant to do to, to take this thing apart and to engineer another society totally based off of lying realities. The people who don't have access to the truth or reject the truth are going to be swallowed up <coughs> without a hope or a prayer <coughs> for the duration, of course, which is eternity.